The sketch is the foundation, but this is another part of that foundation. This is a really important stage where if you get your colors kind of wrong and they don't kind of complement each other well or look good together, you're going to end up at the end result with something that doesn't excite the eye. It doesn't pull your eye in and it makes you kind of want to look away rather than look at it. Forty-three, and I have something I need to do. There's a guy I was talking to online. I have him on my Facebook, and he does podcasts on his channel. He asked me a while back if I wanted to do a podcast. I said yes, and we scheduled it for March 19th. And yesterday he sent me a message just asking me to send him a photo and an image of my logo. I don't have a logo right now. I used to have one, but that was on an old computer, and I would have wanted to redo it anyway. So I downloaded... <laughs> Adobe Illustrator, and I don't know how to use it yet. I've never used it. I normally would use Photoshop, but Photoshop isn't the best option for digital art anyway, um, which I didn't know back when I was using it. So I got to figure out how to use it a little bit, and then I'm going to try and make my logo before I continue with the painting. I'm not going to do too much recording of this. I need to watch a couple of YouTube videos and kind of just get an idea of what I'm doing, figure it out as I go along, and then kind of do a couple little updates throughout the process. Once that's done, we'll be getting onto the painting that you guys see me preparing in the last video. I can show you guys the logo. I have this tiny little drawing. It says 8E or B. Technically says B, but it's a number 8 and a letter E. That's what I want to do as my logo. And I'm excited about it, to be honest. How to draw a logo. In Illustrator. Yes, that's what you want. Who's going to teach me? All right, so I'm going to watch some videos and then... Uh, I'm gonna kind of start to just mess around and figure things out. I can completely draw the logo with the pen, no issues, but I wanna make sure I'm doing it in a way that I can resize this logo anywhere I put it and potentially do some other things with it rather than just having it for like my YouTube channel logo image and stuff like that. So I'm working on this logo now. As far as I can understand it, I think I've started in the right place and I'm hoping it works out. If not, I'm gonna have to start from scratch again, which is gonna suck, but this is part of the learning process and this needs to be done. You know what I mean? It's important to get it done. I want it done. It's something I've been wanting done for a long time. And once it's finished, it's gonna be so worth it because then I, ha I can have my logo in as many places as I want to. I have a lot of really cool ideas for it. And so I gotta get this done. So here we are on the tablet. And right now I'm just putting in these lines and doing these curves and trying to get the shaping right. So you just do the general lines and then you curve them after the thing is though i'm worried because i don't know if the lines are thick enough that i'm doing here we'll, we'll see as it goes along but uh as of now I'm, I'm enjoying the process it's actually pretty fun like look at these curved lines they're actually really nice and clean i'll update you guys in a bit something really interesting about life is how when you're working on things and you're trying to do things and you're being productive and things are going great a lot of times something has to pop up and mess with your your workflow so here's what happened right now i'm working on my logo everything is going great i'm figuring it out i'm working on trying to figure out an issue i had with this zoomed just zooming in super far and not like a, a gradual zoom I fixed that, and as soon as I fixed that, another issue popped up, and then as soon as I tried to figure out the problem, the whole power went off in the unit, except for in the front living room. I tried to hit the electricity boxes, it's not doing anything. Went downstairs, and the lady electricity boxes down there aren't doing anything, and my landlord is in a meeting till 3.30, so I'm sitting here, it's like 1.46, I gotta wait around, and nothing's working. The fridge is off, the oven's off, everything's off. So it's the next day now. The power came back on at around maybe three o'clock yesterday. And because of the fact that I was behind on what I had planned for the day, I just kind of totally blanked recording more. Um, and by the time I got done the- Come on here. Here we go. By the time I got done the logo, I was really excited about it and it looked really dope. So I started, I took the design I had and started just experimenting with it. And I have a bunch of different ones now and- They're really fucking cool. So I'll show you really quick how one or two of them are looking. And then I'm going to move forward to doing the painting finally. So here's the original design. And I think it came out super, super crisp, which is very exciting. And then I just, you know, I did a bunch of other ones too, but this is one of them. And then I also just did this like pink and green style one. And I'm going to probably make a bunch more still. I think I made 20 or 30, probably 20. Because, yo, know, they just, I, I got so excited. They look so dope. So I was like, oh, god damn, I wonder what this would look like. And then every time I did one and I liked it, I was like, okay, well, I better save it. It makes more sense to just save it than not to, you know what I mean? I already made it. So anyway, that's that. And, uh. I'm glad it worked out. It looks like it's going to be really dope and useful. Bro, this is crazy. The power's off again. Again. Like, ah. Uh... I'm just sitting here working on the computer. Nothing else is on in the house. I did use the oven like 10 minutes ago, but I turned it off. Nothing changed. Everything was good. And then suddenly I'm sitting there. Power goes off. Uh, well, I'm basically stuck waiting to hopefully have the power just come back on on its own. I've called my landlord. He called me back. He said he's going to send an electrician. And he thinks there's an over voltage. But that doesn't make sense. If her power's on downstairs, then why is mine going off? And I'm just using the computer and this light and that was it. Nothing else. You know what I mean? Everything was good. And then suddenly, whoop, gone. So like, I don't, I don't understand. Ah. I'm just trying to work on shit, man. I just want to, I just want to get shit done. 
The power is back on. Yesterday was the day the power came on. The day the power went off was not yesterday, but the day before. My landlord said he was sending, he was gonna send an electrician over, but he wasn't gonna get there till the next day in the morning. So basically we ended up sitting with no power for that night. Luckily, my cousin's area in the front, like I mentioned, there was one room that had power. And so we hung out in there for a bit. And then I ultimately went to bed in my cold room. It wasn't too cold yet, so I managed, it was okay. And by the time the electrician came, I was a little colder. He ended up having to call Hydro Quebec. And then Hydro Quebec had to send their own crew to come fix the issue. I think it was around maybe lunchtime or so that they showed up. At that point, I was fucking freezing. But anyway, power's back on now. Video is done uh, when it comes to the preparing the canvas. And now finally I'm working on this video, continuing working on this video, and I'm about to start doing the actual painting. Goddamn delays, bro. It's crazy how life does these types of things, but you know what? It's all good. Uh, everything's still good. Life's good. I'm grateful I have my power back. All is good. I can create. We're set. So now I have my sketch on the canvas. The proportions are good. I'm happy and I want to move forward. So that means I'm going to move into the base layers, which is the most basic colors that you want to have a good plan for. And the reason you want to have a good plan for them is because this is like the foundation. The sketch is the foundation, but this is another part of that foundation. This is a really important stage where if you get your colors kind of wrong and they don't kind of complement each other well or look good together, you're going to end up at the end of result with something that doesn't excite the eye. It doesn't pull your eye in and it makes you kind of want to look away rather than look at it. In this case, I already know what I'm going to kind of doing except for the shirt the shirt i haven't decided yet however i know that my skin is peach this is me i know that my goatee and my hair is red so i'm going to use some sort of an orangey ready type color i've already decided in my mind that i'll be using lobster it's a funny name but this here matches my hair much better than, for example, using an orange. This is their orange, this is hugely bright. It's not, this would not work for my hair. And if I used a, a straight red, it would be too red. So lobster is a good medium in between and that means I don't have to mix any colors. And even if I did have to mix colors, I don't have any empty markers to mix right now. So once I get those done, the skin and the hair, I know that these here, I wanna kinda make like a, a pinky magenta type of vibe, something between pink and magenta, not too dark and not too bright. And then from there, I have the rose. It's probably gonna end up red, but I may do it a different color. That I haven't decided yet. And then the shirt, I maybe will do dark blue or black, whatever, something like that. I'm gonna start with those basic colors that I know that I definitely wanna use that I do not wanna not have in there. For me, I know that's gonna work because I've been doing this for a while and I just, I know that as I move along, I can make the decisions on the go. However, you may end up in a position when you're doing a painting that you don't know what kind of colors you wanna use yet. Let's say you have a character and you know that you can do his or her skin like a human color tone, but you maybe don't wanna do that. You wanna do something unique or different. And sometimes you just, you can't decide. So you go to Google and let's just say for an example you have like an alien character and you want to paint his, him or her like a lilac purple so like a light purple what i would do if i don't know how to match that or i don't know where to go from that is i would type in light purple color palette and then you have all these different options here. So just for an example, let's say I like this section. So I kind of like these colors. These are colors that then would go well together. You could also have something like this with a bit of a peach in there and then the purples or light purple complementing color palette. I want to see if this just brings up some other options that aren't all purple based. So here's something with a bit more of some yellow in there. So you scroll down, you have a bit of green here. So you see what I mean? There's just different options. And when you type this in online, you're going to find different options and you're going to find different things that look good together and things that you like or don't. So here's another example of a completely different palette. But let's say you want to start off with a blue for your alien. That's a bit of a dark blue. I wouldn't use that for an alien, but let's just say you want to. You can then use this for, let's say, his gun, this for his shirt, or this for the gun, this for the shirt, this for the pants, whatever. So this is a really good way just to kind of get some ideas of what could work and maybe what wouldn't work. Once you have something like this, for me anyway, it helps me really make better decisions on the choices I'm going to make going forward. And even if, let's say I have this, here's my light purple. I like this and I like this, but I don't like this. So I take the dark purple out and I could utilize these four colors. You don't have to use all of them at all, but this is a good place to go just to get something that helps you get started. So that's one of the things that I use when I'm kind of in a position where I don't know what I want to do, or even when I do know what I want to do, but I don't know how to match it, or I have some ideas of what could match, but I want to find different shades or scales of color just to get something a bit more unique and to get my mind kind of flowing in different ways so that I'm not always using the same colors. I usually do have a tendency towards certain types of colors. I also like to come out of the box, even if it's just one or two different colors here and there. So that's something that I think is a really good tip to use. I also think that though for people who maybe don't have as much experience with color at all or using colors or deciding on colors or how to match them, I think that one of the most important things I could stress is just trying different things and practicing different ideas and I mean if you're already going to be painting all the time, you're working on a painting and you're excited to get to the next painting, your drive is ambitious. You're like oh I want to do painting and then I'm going to do another painting, I'm just going to keep doing paintings forever. That's a great mind state to have and that's a perfect way for you to just start practicing ideas and thoughts and experimenting with things and trying things out. The 
more you do, the more you'll learn, the more you'll understand and your brain will start to rewire different ways to connect colors and ideas that will just make you have those palettes in your own mind that present beautifully. And it's literally a matter of practice and time and just repeat, repeat, repeat and doing it. I think that that's something that it gets stressed all the time by so many artists, but I feel like even for myself, it's something that younger artists and newer artists kind of just swoop by and kind of push under the table because it's really hard when you're new at art, you're young and you want to be amazing at it, but you're in a place where you're not there yet. And so you'll do a piece and then you'll see it and you either get discouraged or you get really driven to continue keeping on going. And if you hear enough artists tell you it's all about practice, it's all about repeating and doing it again and again and again and listening to the rules, but then breaking them, finding different ways to do things in your own way and you keep doing it, it's all about time and time is going to be your best friend and it always will be your best friend. When I was young, I didn't listen to many artists advice. I didn't want to practice. I didn't want to use bone structure. I didn't care about colors. I never used color at all before I started using these paint markers and painting. I would just draw and I would just use pencil and pen. And this was up until I was about 18. And my art didn't start getting really, really decent until I started actually trying these things and practicing these things. When I look back, my art could have been so much better, so much faster if I had have just listened to these tips that are literally universal tips. Practice all the time. Draw every day. Try drawing new things. Practice perspective. Practice shape drawing. Practice the basics. So the last thing I would say about color decisions is it's never going to hurt you, especially in a lighter color, if you lay a color down and you don't like it. I would say be really careful though with darker colors. Let's say I decide to use this peach in a wholly different context. I make his skin like a light blue, like the blue that I have here. And then I want to use the peach for the sunglasses. Let's say I don't like the peach for the sunglasses and I've done a layer or two or even three. I can cover that over with a whole entirely different color. I'll just, I'll just have to do another three layers over top, sometimes four or five to make sure that nothing shows through and the paint from underlying doesn't pop over the new color. That's something that you'll see me do in a lot of my time-lapse videos where I've made a decision, I've gone through with it, and I did the decision because I wasn't sure how I felt and I wanted to see, and then I end up switching it back. You go back and you cover it over. Not a big deal. I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to do the first layer, and then I'm going to show you guys how that looks, talk about that very briefly, and then we'll get into the second layer. I will show you the first layer compared to the second, and the same with the third, and that will basically be this video. Like a space invader. Head a shrink towards the station. My drop ship is stuck with laser grips. Ray guns, danger. danger. I'm traveling towards my enemies. Gonna vaporize them with the weaponry. Canisters of gas and a light beam. But the rival light chases me. Battle royale inside me. Trying to be the last one surviving. Load up the clips as I drive in the whip and to buy as I aim at the targets. Reload that rocket. Hit hard like comets. Pull back grenade pin. Count down then toss it. Toss. Learning to spar with the dark. I'm shadow boxer. Shadow boxer. Competing with me and my demons take many losses. many losses. I run out of ammo and lose, but then I recoup or settle and prove. Upgrading my guns and my moves. Reload the mix. It's looking pretty good. Just want to say a couple of things about it. First of all, I did try to fix the flower. I think that this shaping will make it easier for me to make it look proper and more proportionate. But the one thing that I did want to mention about this is, so you can see if you look very closely, it's really easy to see all of these underlying lines from the sketch. One of the reasons we want to do more than one layer is because of that. But also you can tell this dark color looks pretty good, but this light color, you can see, you can tell there's some white from the canvas itself underlying. When you do your first layer, you're going to see a mess. It's going to look messy. You're not going to really be able to fully tell how good it's going to look. You can get an idea of it but it's not going to be super, super solid yet. So you want to do that second layer to get that next level. And then the third layer usually finishes off and makes it perfect. For a color like white, you're going to probably want more because it's a thinner color and it's white. It's very bright. So things show through easier. It's really important to have three layers for the purpose of actually solidifying your piece. Because if you don't do that, you're going to end up with this piece that has all these little things underlying and everything. And you can add shadow on top of this, but it's just not going to look as professional. You don't want to see through anything and you want the colors to be perfectly clean, solid, straight through, no variations in the thickness. You want it to be as perfect as you can get it before you even move forward. Every step is a preparation step before the next step. And every step matters just as much as the next step because if you don't prepare properly in the previous step, you're just not gonna have as nice of a piece. You have to be really careful and you have to take your time. You have to care about what you're doing. I'm gonna do the second layer and then we'll do a little comparison and you'll see the differences. One thing I forgot to say was this is also a perfect time and stage where if you don't like certain colors or you feel like things need to be changed color-wise, you wanna do it now before you get too thick because you can change it when it's thick later. Later. However, if you're feeling like you're not too sure about a certain color, now would be the time to try something else to give it a go, see how you feel about it. And if you don't like it, you can always revert back to the original color or try something different. The thicker it gets, the harder it's going to be to cover something over. Before you start your painting at all, which I should have said this way earlier, but I didn't think of it. Before you start your painting, every layer you do, every new layer, every time you stop for a little bit, whatever, I highly recommend to just wash your hands, make sure that they're clean, make sure they're not oily. You 
don't want to get oil on the painting as much as possible you want to avoid that at all costs especially if you're not using gloves it's kind of almost unavoidable however the cleaner you can keep your hands the better the nicer your piece will remain you don't want to have oil of your skin seeping through the paint you don't want to even really touch the canvas with your fingers specifically if your hand is resting on it like this and you're painting whatever that's it's not too bad if you start touching it all over the place or even when it's finished you're like letting other people touch your canvas stuff like that the oil is going to show on the paint and you don't want that it's going to make for a very unprofessional painting some people do use gloves i personally i don't like using gloves it restricts my hand and i can't do everything properly i can't get specific i can't get nice tight lines it just it does not work for me so i don't do it but that's something you could try as well latex gloves the other thing i want to mention is layering and the drying time usually the drying time is pretty quick i would say it's maybe about five to seven minutes at the most by the time you're done the first layer the whole entire painting will be dry and you can move into the second layer but when it comes to let's say switching a color i would say at least wait 10 minutes before you start trying to put a new color over a previous color because it will still be a bit damp it is dry by five to seven minutes 10 minutes is probably a better drying time to wait just to be safe my heart is in a state right now my mind is always racing like a street race route the danger is always high and i've been risking myself speeding down the lane till i crash break down i'm either moving quick or not at all my hands are on the ground but i can't even crawl i fell into the sludge and i can't clean it off i'm stained by this darkness but it leads me on my energy is so low, but my mind is still in fast mode. I know it soon will pass though, so I try to let it go. You can see that it's a little bit thicker. There's still some visibility underlying. So for the peach here, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to do four layers. And the reason being is because I used the, the baby blue marker instead of the yellow. Normally I do use yellow, um, which is usually why I don't show pre-sketch for the canvas. Is yellow is not very visible on the camera, but in this case I did blue so you guys can see it. So it's gonna take another layer or two, but that's okay. Just for certain colors, mainly just for the, uh, the peach, essentially for the, the pink eyes. That's how it's looking. And I'm gonna just continue straight into the next, uh, actually no, wait. I'm not gonna continue in because there is a couple things to say. So one thing I was thinking about as I was going through is a lot of times people message me and they say that they're having a hard time and when they're doing a second or third layer, they're finding that the paint is being scratched off by the marker. The reason that's happening is because you're probably putting too much pressure, you're probably going too hard and your hand weight is causing the, the marker to scrape off the previous layer. There was a section here, it was when I was doing this area that I was having a hard time myself and the flow on the nib wasn't, uh, it wasn't coming out wet enough and it was kind of looking scrapey. So I I had to go extra slow. You'll probably visibly see the difference in the speed that I was going across on the hair. The reason being is because I was getting that scratchy effect. So I had to really dab the marker out a lot of times to try and get it to flow really well. And I had to very carefully and slowly go across. There was a couple of other areas that I was noticing that issue too. And I'm wondering if it's the gesso situation with this different canvas. But the point is you do want to be careful. And if you start noticing the scratchiness, dab it more and get it more, more soaked, I guess you could say. And just go a little bit lighter and try to very carefully lay the next layers of paint. Another thing I wanted to mention since I was thinking of it is be careful with your hand as well the weight of your hand just pushing down on the canvas because you can actually end up stretching your canvas and making what looks like a bit of a dent just from having a heavy hand like resting your hand too heavily on the canvas still feeling lost inside this cycle every couple weeks i'm back to feeling down and i don't really know if this is just a part of my whole way of gaining inspiration maybe i need this pain so i can give the world hope I drown in insignificance, cannot swim. So, as you can see when I zoom in, you can see that the skin still needs some because the lines are showing through. It happens sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends. The white on the shirt as well needs to be done. For this particular painting, there are quite a few colors that need to have a fourth layer, but I'm not surprised by that, that was expected for me, and I really am thinking that this canvas, the amount of gesso is not uh, as good as, as what I normally would get. I'm not entirely sure about that, but that's what it's feeling like. Regardless though, it's looking great. I'm not gonna record the last session of, of layering. It just saves a bit of time for you, and it saves a bit of memory on my computer for me, and time for me editing-wise. Oh. Got our layers. You can see it looks much nicer. I still do see this this one line here. So after I get everything else done, if I need to, I will cover that over, which I think I'm going to need to. And the hand here, I'm not too worried because once I do the shadows, that will go away. The shadows will cover that up. So when you know that you have a certain area that's going to have shadows and it's going to cover up certain parts that are still visible, it's okay. You can kind of skip that. And when you do the shadows, it will go away. So this is how it looks now. It's looking nice and solid, very, very solid. And so that is this video. And now we move on to the next video, which is where I start to do the shading and the shadows and the lighting and explain how to do that and give you ideas on how to do that and show you how I do it. I hope this was cool. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. I hope it had a lot of information in there that maybe you didn't think of or have in your own knowledge bank. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. And the next one's on the way. All of it is only just a game, bro. Every day we live, it's all the same show.